This is Walk to Wealth, episode 13. My name is John Mendez, and I am your host. Welcome to Walk to Wealth, where I motivate and inspire people new to the world of personal finance by letting you all in behind the scenes of someone who's still on his way. Thank you for tuning into today's episode. For all my new listeners, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you can make it. For all the OGs in the building, welcome back home. Thank you for all the loyalty and all the support. Alrighty, we are back for part two of this interview to wrap things up here with my good friend Gary. Stay tuned to the end of the episode. This is a good one. And so yeah. for anyone that you know has a team, whether it's they want to start off in wholesaling, whether they want to become an agent, whether they have something that's not even real estate related at all, you know, what's the first key hire to any essential like like productive and you know successful team? That's really, that's a good question. I think the biggest thing you got to do is figure out, you got to be honest with yourself and yeah. figure out, A, what are you, what are you bad at? <laughs> and B, you know, like, what do you not want to do? Like, and what are like low, like income producing tasks, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like. You what know? do you mean by low income producing tasks? So like, for example, I, like me finding properties, right? So mm-hmm. let's say, you know, I'm, I'm connecting with you and like, you know, you, you give me a wholesale deal a month. Like you give me a flip each month and then mm-hmm. if each flip, I make 40 grand on it and it's, that's six months. Well, I just technically made $240,000 in profit by our relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I spent those, that same time just doing paperwork, you know, I mean, that's, and I could outsource it. I outsource it. It's, this might sound like messed up to people, but like in the Philippines, like $6 an hour, $5 an hour is like they're making bank. Yeah. It's like six figures in the Phil- the Philippines. Yeah. So I outsource stuff like that so that I could focus my time, you know, like really harnessing the connections with people. And then it also allows me to enjoy my other time so I don't have to do both of them, right? So if I yeah. spend 20 hours a week doing paperwork and then 40 hours connecting, 20 hours connecting with people, you know, I could actually just take that 20 hours back of my own time and spend whatever, $5 an hour mm-hmm. on that. So, um, yeah, so you just got to do whatever, like, those tasks you're good at and what's going to really make money for yourself and the business. So for me, it's finding more deals. Yeah, definitely. I feel like another thing, too, like, because now that I'm in the real estate industry, a lot of people talk about outsourcing and VAs and stuff like that and mention mm-hmm. the Philippines. I feel like a lot of people don't understand that our economy isn't the economy that everyone else has. No. And they look at not only just, like, when it comes to, like, economic things, but, like, they look at everything, like, through the eyes of the um, the, like the lenses of our c- culture and how they were brought up instead of trying to switch lenses and perspective to the people that they're actually trying to make these judgments on. And so it's like a lot of people are, you know, have these opinions. It's like a lot of these opinions are, are, you know, rooted in information that's false because it's like you're looking at it through the wrong lens. So it seems as if, you know, you're not paying them, you know, they're making below minimum wage, it's poverty, but it's like, American dollar is worth a lot, and I don't know the exact you know translation between it's like dollars. Forty, I think it's like forty to to Philippine yeah, dollar money. To 40, yeah, roughly, well, yeah, exactly. So it's like <laughs> they can't pay about forty dollars an hour. Most people here, yeah, would you know kill for forty dollars an hour. I know people that are making twenty dollars an hour that think they're making you know a million a year, and so um, yeah, I just want to throw that out there. A lot of people tend to look at things the wrong lens, yeah, and so. Now your team right now for your your flipping business. How many of you guys are in total? You know you said you had a VA and a um, your partner. Yeah, but we're small, man. We're a small shop. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, yeah, my partner and I, and so he's he lives like an hour away, mm-hmm. um, and we just so we try to like not have him drive in like way too far away. Yeah, we try to stay in like an hour radius for properties, you know, in that area of him, and um, but like we we're doing a house in Greenwich right now. And we hired a, uh, a a project manager to manage that. So we give him, you know, we give him like ten grand um, mm. to manage the project, and then he's getting ten percent of the profit on the back end. So you know, mm. we're, we're again, it's something we're giving up um, from you know a monetary standpoint to yeah. free up time, right? If Brian has to drive from Brantford, 
traffic, you know, traffic down here, mm-hmm. hour and a half of traffic, you know, three hours, like that's, that's a long time. So he could be doing other, other jobs and, you know, other flips. So like right now we're, we just sold like three houses in the past three or four weeks. So, and we have, we have three going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, at one point we had six, seven going on actively. So, I mean, he couldn't, he couldn't do all of that at once. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he was, but <laughs> he can't, you know, sustain that yeah, over for a long, long period of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's hiring out like that. And so what is a property manager? What What, what is their role in project the, manager? Project manager. Sorry. Yeah. What, what is a project manager for anyone that may not know um, what their job is? Yeah. So basically project manager is, I mean, it is kind of what it sounds like, they're, you know, they're managing the project, but they're, what they're doing is they're, they're hiring contractors, right? So they're getting bids. Mm-hmm. If you have someone come out and paint the house, you don't want to just take one quote from a painter. You want to get, say, three quotes from different painters and get kind of, you know, the best, the best, um, I don't want to say price because price could screw you if you can always get the cheapest person. Yeah. The quality might not be there. But, uh, you know, you just want to get get the best contract. The best value. Yep. And then they go pick up, you know, they might go pick up materials. They're just making sure, like, quality check. Hey, you know, this looks good. We got to fix this, all that. And then um, there's a lot of just different stuff that comes up, like, you know, like we just had a, we're doing demo and like the hose broke at the house. It was like leaking everywhere or the dump, then the dumpster didn't come the second time around. So then it's like, all right, they has to call, call the dumpster company and go get a hose for the the guys, you know, cause mm-hmm. some of these guys like they're, you know, they don't, they don't speak good English. Like, like we'll have like a, we have a crew from like uh, Honduras and then another one from like Guatemala. And they're like the hardest workers ever. Like these guys will work for 10 or 12, 14 hours a day, you know, but like yeah. they're just not. Like we're better off just having them work and just like grind, you know what I mean? And they're not, you know, they don't have the best English and, and just, it's hard to communicate with them sometimes. Or yeah. That. So, um, we don't have you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not everyone here in this industry is bilingual. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so we that like help out with stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of what the project manager will do. Hopefully that kind of made. Yeah. Yeah. It makes perfect sense. sense. Yeah. And so you, so how much is this deal in Greenwich that you're working on right now? How much is that one? Um, uh, what are the numbers looking like on that one? Yeah, so that's that's actually our biggest our biggest deal, and we've we've kind of scaled up to doing some more of these uh, higher end homes as we've um, you know gained gained capital from other flips. Um, so this one we bought for six eighty five, seven seven seven. It's my lucky. I just like sevens at the end. So every house we I mean, sell, you're from Vegas, right? <laughs> every house we sell seven seven seven. Every house <laughs> the offer is seven seven seven. So yeah, we bought it for six eighty five, and um, we'll put in about three hundred. Because we're doing it, so we bought it as a two bed, one bath, right? Mm-hmm. Eleven hundred square feet, and then we're we're gonna make it a four bed, three and a half bath, and we're adding another twelve hundred square feet, mm-hmm. and plus a, an attic. So we're doing like a pretty, pretty solid renovation. Yeah, and then we'll sell it for. There's like no no inventory over there. It's in Costco, um, probably one six. Really? Yeah. And so, like, how on earth did you have, like, the creativity to even think about doing that? You see a house where you said it's 2-1, adding an attic, adding another 1,000 square feet, adding another couple bathrooms, bedrooms, and all that. Yeah. Like, how does that, how do you even run numbers for that? Well, you got to, you got to, um, first, like, you have to think out of the box, right? So, mm-hmm. like, you know, a lot of, like, even, like, just flippers starting out. I mean, I've been doing this four and a half, five years, right? Mm-hmm. Five years in May. So, like, I've, I've, you know, I have some experience yeah. doing it. So, um, some people just look at, it, oh, it's a two, one, no, not a deal. Like that makes no sense. Six eighty five, mm-hmm. it's too much, you know, whatever. So, but if you look at it and then you realize like, hold on a sec, like we could do an addition because like in Greenwich specifically, it's all about maximizing the size of the house per the size of the lot. Mm-hmm. Like for example, you could do like 36% of the lot size could be the square footage of the house. Mm-hmm. So it's 6,000 square foot lot. You could do 2,000 square foot house. Mm -hmm. And that's what people do in like Greenwich. They just maximize the size. So we saw that as an opportunity. So we're like, all right, yeah, it's 685. It's expensive for a 2-1. But if we could maximize, make it, you know, a four, three and a half. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's worth one six instead of, you know, 800 fixed up, right? Yeah. We just, you know, we doubled, we doubled up on it. So, um, yeah, just kind of being creative and thinking outside the box a little bit. And then also... How can we maximize the most on this? And the thing I like about some of these higher price homes now is like 
not it's there's less competition because right now there's no deals on the market. No yeah. one can find any deals, even wholesalers that can't find deals. Really? So like, yeah. So it's there's not many out there. So it's like you gotta you gotta maximize, and then also there's a less of a buyer pool for those higher end homes because mm-hmm. not as many people can you know can can a- a- afford that. So thankfully we've you know started gaining our capital to be able to do that. So um, we're just trying to scale up a little bit, and it's sometimes it's easier to do you know. Uh, one property and make 120 grand versus doing, you know, four of them at 30 grand a piece. Yeah, so. definitely. I have a couple questions from that. Um, yeah. So then my first question then is, so um, you mentioned, you know, not having enough capital and um, you've been doing this for about five years now. So for anyone that wants to get into the fix and flipping space, you know, how do you suggest they start off? It's a good question. Mm-hmm. Um, two things. I think first, I, you could go about it two ways, I would say. Um, the first thing is you start whole, like what I did. I started wholesaling. That's kind of how I got into it, right? So I was, I was, uh, you know, started finding these off-market deals. You start really getting good at analyzing deals, like figuring out how much they're going to be worth fixed up, you know, like what renovation costs and such will be um, involved in a, you know, within a deal. You start meeting with different contractors. You figure out, all right, this is what this is, you know, going to be worth and all that. This is how much it costs to do a roof and painting. And you just really educate yourself Mm -hmm. in all of that. And then, you know, you get your capital up from some of these wholesales. Like I would say in Connecticut right now, I think the average wholesale fee is like 15 grand. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, you do three wholesale deals, right? And then if you go to get a, um, um, a hard money loan, which is like a high interest loan, Mm -hmm. short term loan, but it's what like, you know, flippers would use. Um, you know, if, if you have some capital to do that, then, uh, you know, you're able to kind of scale up, scale up that way. So you get wholesale, wholesales, you learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. And then the next step would be to, to do a flip. But the other thing is though, too, that a lot of people don't, they, everyone wants to do it on their own, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, Oh, I'm just, I'm going to do this. I want to make, I want to make 60 grand. I could do it myself. Um, but I, I, I'm a big believer in partnering. Yeah. I think there's a huge value in just being a part of a team, you know, and that's why I don't like, that's why I don't flip by myself. Like I don't yeah. like have a partner. I know that I suck at re- renovations and project management. And I know that cause I did a flip in Ohio and I had a contractor walk off at $60,000. Really? And I didn't get it back. <laughs> so it's like stuff happens, you know? So that you, you find like what we were talking about before you find out what you're bad at and then you, you know, what you're not best at, and then you find someone that you can team up with that is good at it. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's why I think, you know, like as you're, if you're starting out, you provide value and like just being the, the hustler, you maybe help find the deals. Maybe you're like going to run supplies out. You're doing this, you're doing that. Maybe you're an agent and you list the house for them. Um, but you provide value in some, some form or fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, you, you figure out getting paid as something, uh, you know, on that, whether it's a percentage or like a flat fee or whatever, mm-hmm. but, I, you know, what's the saying? Like, it's like, uh, 20% of a hundred is better than 0% of nothing. Yeah. have nothing. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, and that's so true. Right. Um, so I think that's something, you, you know, that I would suggest when you're, when you're getting started. So. Yeah. And then to follow up from that question is what's one thing that you, you might've noticed with people who don't want to partner, like what are some of the reasons like that they don't partner that you've noticed that they have to get over? I mean, I think a lot of people they they just think they 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 think they could do it by them themselves, and they'll learn, mm-hmm. you know. But like, it's just sometimes it's like a trust thing, you know. Yeah. With people like they they just and they think they could do things better, mm-hmm. or you know, like they're I don't know. It's that's it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tough question because um, I. I think a lot of, I think most of it's more like people not trusting or thinking they could do it on their own and they mm. want to make the most amount of money. Yeah. Like, they're, like a lot of people really think about making the most amount at first. Yeah. And it's, it's so much of a relationship game, you know, like what we're doing. And it's like not, it's a really small space actually. There's not that many people like what I know, like I met you and then like, I'm talking to like Dave DeVito and then he's like, Oh yeah, I know John. And then yeah. I'm talking to like Ed and then it's like, Oh yeah. And then it's just like everyone like starts knowing everyone. And then it's mm-hmm. like, wow. So it's like, you know, um, it's a small, it's a small world out yeah. there. Um, and, it's such a tight knit community yeah. too, as well. I feel like it really is. Um, at least for like, for me, like I touch upon, like, I think one of the reasons too is ego. And like, for me, like I could have joined a team, uh, as an agent, mm-hmm. like going in now, just kind of thinking it's like, 
you know, I kind of left school for, because I didn't want to work for someone. So, like, for me to become an agent to then work for someone yeah. would kind of be like, <laughs> you know, not what I, really what I what I was planning. But like, on on you know, to on a, in my defense, I, I, as soon as I became an agent, I got licensed. I, I hired a coach. So it's like, although I didn't join a team, yeah. I hired a coach. You know, and you know, she's actually the top productivity coach within all Keller Williams offices in the entire nation. So it's like, wow. she's been, she does, she has a coaching, a good coaching business setup. So it's like, for me, it's like, you know, I don't want to do the team route too much. And, and I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's my ego. I don't, I don't you know. I don't want to work with some, for someone else. Yeah. It's like, as you said, having someone to either a, that's not good at what you're good at or help you, you know, see where you can improve and stuff like that. Like for example, a coach or maybe a mentor and stuff so that you can potentially not technically do it on your own, but be like solo. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, um, and then, um, what else did I want to say? I was just going to touch a little bit more upon that. Um, just to kind of switch topics a little bit, um, before we get too off in a tangent, when you were talking about the deal in Greenwich and, uh, how most people wouldn't initially look in the deal and be like, Oh, it's a two one, you know, let's just drop it. Um, there's something that goes around that we say all the time. It's like deals aren't found. They're made. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do people go about, you know, getting that creativity, obviously in, Without you know getting experience and getting their foot in the door, obviously, and um, getting that create uh, that creativity and stuff when making deals and not just trying to find them. Yeah, so I mean, um, off of that, like we we're talking about teaming up, working with different you know different people, right? Um, we actually, and I forgot to mention her before, but I found this. Uh, actually met the husband at ironically at the gym at LA Fitness. Yeah, and like super experienced lived in Costco in Greenwich for like 30 years. They just know like the area, like, you know, the back of their hand. And so they just really educated me on this whole thing about, you know, maximizing the square footage of the houses, like doing this, you know, this is where the good areas are. This is what this will sell for. So like normally I'll sell a house. I'll be honest. I sell a house myself so that I don't have to pay commission on it. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I'm like, I want to, I want to save every dollar <laughs> Yeah, I can. So we make the most amount of money. But with this, it was like, you know what? Like, we'll pay the money. Well, you know, like, she deserves the the commission, and she's going to, like, kind of coach us through. And, like, she knows better than anyone what what's going to sell and what we could do here. So she kind of, you know, that was – she really helped with that. To, mm. to You know, I found the property, yes, but she was the one that was like, all right, here's what we can do. She went to the town. She knew the town official, like, mm-hmm. so, I, you know, was able to use her network, right? So we tapped into that, and then, I mean, that was – that was like the end, you know? Yeah. So let me get this right. So you're yeah. a licensed agent technically. Yeah. And you had another licensed agent. No, not technically I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you're a licensed agent and you had another eight licensed agent yeah. uh, actually list your house to sell. Because- well, well, she, she's going to list. She, she helped represent me to buy it and she's going to represent me to sell it after on really? both sides. Really? Yeah. And I'll do that all day. You know, if someone brings me a deal and it makes sense for me. I'm not going to count their brackets and they're helping me out, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I always say that like anyone in any realtors who have a, have a deal and they bring it to me, it's like, yeah, I'll pay you on the front end and then we'll pay you to sell. You could sell it afterwards too. Mm-hmm. You know, they're helping out everyone, everyone eats, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. I feel like one thing like in my community, like growing up, it's like, I, and I don't know if it, if, if you've noticed it as well, but it's like, I feel like in our area, like Stanford, Connecticut, like the Connecticut area, it's like a lot of people like try to, tear each other down in order to get up and, uh, you know, get, uh, get ahead in life and stuff like that. And you're just like constantly like just people pulling you down, pulling you down. It's like, there's not too many people. I said, unless you get into like one of these, you know, find your tribe and get into one of, one of these communities that have like-minded people to help boost you up and keep it going. But like, have you noticed that as well? Like as you've been, you know, getting into this real estate world and getting this going that people, you know, haven't been as supported, at least the people that you would expect to be supported. Well, uh, have they been as supportive as you would have expected? Or it's like, have you received more support from people that you've never met before until now? I think it's, it's interesting because you actually receive more support from people that are higher up and that are like super successful. Like mm-hmm. They're so willing to like, like give you their knowledge and their experience and all of that versus like someone that might be at your level or like a little bit higher, you know, cause like mm-hmm. that person that might like, they might be, you know, in real, they might've been in real estate for six months, right? Like they're like, Oh, like, I don't want John to like beat me or I don't want him to be better. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. kind of the competitive nature. Right. Or like someone who's just starting out. Like I remember like my dad was like, 
oh, like, you know, maybe you should, like, go get a, you know, nine-to-five job, like, when it was going slow, right? Yeah. So it's, like, you get kind of, like, the naysayers, in a sense, and the people that, you know, like, they just, yeah, they kind of bring you down, they tell you it's not, you know, you shouldn't do that, or the people that are just, you know, that are a little more experienced that don't want to help because they're, they're scared, you're going to mm-hmm. be better. But, yeah, the people that are above, it's it's really cool how they're they're so willing to just, like, like Ed, right, from mm-hmm. the RIA, right, owns the RIA. He's like, hey, like, hit me up. We'll go out for coffee. He's like, I'm a cheap date. Like, just we'll go out to coffee. Mm-hmm. I might even pay. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear for 30 minutes. And, like, that's that's the coolest thing to me. Mm-hmm. You know, people like that are willing to give their time and, and help out, like, to people you know, that are just starting out. So. Yeah. And if anyone that may not know, I've actually been, I get an ad on the podcast sooner or later, but um, cool. he also owns over a hundred units or so, if I'm not mistaken, I, you know, he said that he sold like close to like 70 or so to one of his partners in I forget which state or something like that, that's but it? <laughs> right. That's it. Only 70, un- <laughs> 70 doors. Right. And so for me, it's like, I met with Ed about three or four times and he connected me with um a hard money lender that he knows personally. He also connected me with the, the property manager that he uses. And it's like, mm-hmm. As I said, as you were saying, it's like these like big shots for lack of a better way to put it, you would assume because I guess they're quote unquote like higher up that they wouldn't either A, have the time or B, wouldn't be willing. But it's like that's completely the opposite. They'll yeah. give up more time like and it's, it's it's all out of the kindness of their heart. Like I met with the um, Ed about three or four times now. Mm-hmm. All, you know, he's a little far from me. I, I, <laughs> So taking him out on a, on a date, is, it would be a bit of a drive, you know, going and see him for 30 minutes and driving almost, what, like an hour or on hour there and, and back, hour and a half there <laughs> and back, you know. So but we, we're meeting on Zoom or over the phone. It's, you know, it's just been just as helpful, if not more, yeah. getting to talk to him and stuff. And um, uh, who has been, like, instrumental in your, in your, like, you know, as you've been getting it going? Like, has anyone, that's, like, made, a, like, a, a clear, like, big big impact on what you've been doing um here or like but in the just in general in general in like um i would say like back in vegas um right probably you've probably seen him online yeah he has like a lot of he's done a ton of flips education you know he's big ryan pineda um he was a big one like i remember wholesaling to him it's kind of cool like he was starting out you know he might have been doing 20 then 50 then 120 deals like i saw like and i was mm-hmm. wholesaling a couple houses to him and, um, like one piece of it, like that, that really stuck to me is this is kind of off topic, but he just, he said like, you could always go broke. You could go broke buying good deals. Right. Cause there's always deals out there. Mm-hmm. And like, I always wanted to come, like, I'm, I'm a very impatient person. Yeah. So whenever I see a deal, I just want to jump at it. And then I remember I got myself in a couple of situations where I had no, I had no reserves. I had no money left. Yeah. Right. And, um, so someone like him, like when he told me that it resonates and sometimes I, I'm like, shit. Just over over leveraged yeah <laughs> but um you know like but someone like that like he really and, and he was willing to to you know go out to lunch and help out you know you ask a you know you text him and ask a question and he'll you know he responds like within 30 minutes you know mm-hmm. so it's like people like that it's cool to you know it's cool to see that um and then just i mean dude now we got we got youtube university right yeah like you go there you like you could really find out anything you want to find out um about about real estate, you know, and there's so many different avenues you could go and Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. A little quick funny story. Um there was one time it was me, my sister and a, a friend of mine and it was probably like one o'clock in at like in the morning. And we were all up late just playing Monopoly. And like the entire game, I kid you not, I was pretty much like borderline like broke. I bought every house, every spun I get, you know, <laughs> I was living just as soon as I got to go, like that just gave me enough to make ends meet sick for the next to go around. I was just praying I didn't land in the house. But, you know, so granted, you know, I didn't go broke, but I was right near it. And luckily I was in Monopoly. So if I did go broke, I could just pack up and go upstairs and go to bed. Right. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's not like that in the real world. But it ended up playing out in favor because at the end of the game, you know, I had all the houses. I owned like the whole like third block it was my block entirely. So if it, I ended up getting to a point where like my sister landed on a on a house and she didn't have the money to pay up. And it's like, it's like everything. And so after that, you know, I ended up winning the game cause you know, a bit of a try hard, but you know, it's the same way in, in, in real life, you know, not having reserves. And as you said, going broke to buy good deals. Yeah. It, it can end up biting you. So you're butt. playing with six year old. Is that you said? <laughs> I mean, she's, 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 uh, she's, uh, not six years old. She's just, she's in high school. So, you know, uh, I think it's pretty fair, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, 
as we start getting closer to wrapping up, yeah. what's like one call to action you could, you know, give to anyone that's listening right now to, you know, get them going and uh, get them from not just not just listening to this podcast, but actually out there either a doing something or b putting them in a position to go and do something, mm-hmm. do something. I think um, so. We we kind of just touched on it a little bit actually, but I think you you, you really want to find out what your end your end goal is. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, like in real estate, for, I mean, there's so many, we just talked about that, so many avenues you could go into, you know, mm-hmm. wholesaling, flipping, um, you know, traditional real estate, right. Lending, you know, so you, you kind of want to find out like what avenue you're going at. You're looking for, you know, to replace your job, get more income, um, rental properties for, you know, cash flow appreciation. Do I just want to lend money out and, and get, have money coming in passively? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just like really figuring out what, what your goal is. And then finding like three people that are are in that position you want to be in, right? So if you want a hundred doors like Ed, um, you know it's like all right, you 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 reach out to Ed, right? Mm-hmm. You meet with Ed and you figure out, you ask him how he got there, you know, and 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 you do that with like three people that are in that position you want to be in, and then I think you're gonna find out it 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 might not be it might not be as hard as you think, mm-hmm. um, and and I think that's like the biggest thing to to get started is to like, so you could really see it firsthand mm-hmm. and then you just take action. Like you have to take action. And like, I mean, I don't think like no one takes act. You know, a lot of people get analysis paralysis, right? Mm-hmm. And they just, they go on YouTube and they look at all this stuff for like three months and then they're like, yeah, but I want to get in. And how many people do you hear that? They say they want to get into real estate. To be and, completely honest with you. I mean, I, I don't think I'm at the age where people are, <laughs> are thinking like that, but you know, I'm at the age where a lot of people are, are starting to like, get the idea of becoming entrepreneurial yeah. and a lot of people aren't, you know, I feel like now because times are changing, a lot of people are getting into it a little bit earlier than they would have because it's kind of becoming a little bit more normal, but even still like no one's thinking big yeah, at all yeah. whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And the people that, you know, that don't get into it at all, just like, as you said, you get that analysis, analysis paralysis, like, yo, you know, I, I got to do this or I got this plan or I'm going to do this this summer. I know like a lot of like people that are close to me that, been having plans that haven't come into into play for a while now just because like you know just it's the kind of stuck in that analysis paralysis but and, and this is like stuff that's like not even like real estate related and other yeah. and other endeavors but it's like and it's like every avenue of life there's people that's going to be you know doing it and there's people that's going to be making plans mm-hmm. and like the people that are making plans are just going to like sit there and watch as everyone walks past them pretty much yeah no I, exactly so i mean the biggest thing is is taking that action right and then just consistency on that action because mm-hmm. i mean i've seen you you've been pretty consistent lately <laughs> with the reels and you know waking up what time do you wake up now five in the morning five, every, every morning, morning for the morning. past like five <laughs> you know? maybe like i think i've been waking up since six in the morning since like september okay and then like since like december i've been waking up like close to five i'm not gonna mm-hmm. lie I'll like oh it'll be like 10 o'clock i'll go on instagram after like whatever do my morning routine i'm like damn He's been up since five again. <laughs> what have I done with my life? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, but like, like consistency like that, you know, yeah. so if, if you get consistent with whatever you're looking to, you know, do like going towards that, mm-hmm. that, that longer term goal and then breaking it down by to smaller goals. I think that's the biggest thing you got to do. Starting out. Definitely agreed. And just a little quick, like a uh, sidebar for anyone that's listening. Uh, you don't have to wake up at five in the morning, as you can see. You know, that's not everyone. Uh, I don't take cold showers. I would never take cold showers, you know. <laughs> it's not my cup of tea. But I will wake up in the morning if I have to. You know, I'm a morning person. I'm not taking cold showers. So you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. And, you know, find what works for you and go by the that route. And, uh, Gary, do you have anything that you got planned in the, in the future? I know you mentioned a little bit about coaching people. That's something that you plan on uh, scaling and doing. Uh, Honestly, like, I'm not a guru. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so uh, just trying to send a plug out here 999 of course <laughs> only for today only <laughs> call me right now <laughs> no but like i don't do any of that but i really i i do like um i've gotten referrals and stuff just like people you know reaching out or like seeing stuff on instagram or mm-hmm. like a friend of a friend who i've helped coach and really the biggest thing is is with like wholesaling specifically is getting a system down um and that like a system down for marketing because it's mm-hmm. all mar- wholesaling is just marketing um, so getting that system down and then the consistency of that. So I've, mm-hmm. I've helped people do that. So I'm always, you know, I always will help, um, in, in that sense. And then also, yeah, just keeping the, keeping the flipping going. So we'll probably do like 25 flips this year. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the, that's the goal. And, um, just kind of continue doing that. Going to have to buy some rentals just due to tax purposes for mm-hmm. the year and, and ongoing years. So, um, do a little of that and then, 
yeah, man, just just see what happens. I just actually uh, I'm under contract on a on a lake house in on Lake Candlewood. Mm-hmm. Um, nice little like uh, right on the water. It's got a dock, nice little in ground pool and stuff. I'm pretty pumped, and um, you have to check it out. And uh, but yeah, so like that's the first project I'm actually doing, like real estate related. That's for myself. Yeah, I've always done it for strictly investment purposes, like you know, making money and doing that. And this time I'm like, you know what? I want to like use the skills I've learned for that, for like my, my personal benefit. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm just going to enjoy it and uh, see where things go. If you ask me where I want to be in five years, I, I'll tell you, I don't have an answer for you and I'd be lying if I did. <laughs> so. Great. Well, that was yeah. not one of the, the questions I was going to ask you. And then you kind of segued right into it. So every, every interview, I got to uh, ask the fast five questions, right? And just so everyone knows, this is not scripted. I did not tell them the questions beforehand. So it's all off the top of the head, right? So question number one, who's your favorite music artist? Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez. Oh, there we go. We got some we got some good tunes in the building. Okay, okay. All right. What's your favorite condiment? Chipotle mayo. Chipotle mayo. Okay. Yep. What's your favorite pizza topping? Jazz. Straight jazz. <laughs> nice and simple, right? Nice and simple. Yep. Um, what was your favorite show growing up? Growing up? Probably Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. Okay. Yeah. That's the first. Okay. Yep. And then your, the last question is, if you had a DJ name, what would it be? DJ name? Yeah, what would your DJ name be? I'm going to keep it simple because I'm Gary Linden Crawford III, so I'd probably just go DJ G- GC3. Just like your Instagram? Yep. DJ just GC3. Like <laughs> underscore, underscore. <laughs> <laughs> well, all righty, Gary. I'm glad you were able to come and stop by. You're my first interview in person in the studio cool. over here at Royal Communication Center, so shout, big shout out to them. And Gary, um, anything else you want to say before, you know, we end the podcast? No, I, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, seriously, if, if anyone needs, like, uh, they have a question or whatever, anything we talked about that someone's curious about, like, don't mm-hmm. feel free to uh, to reach out. So Definitely. I'll make sure to put your, your contact information in the show notes, tag you and everything so that if anyone needs to find you, they can find you, Gary. But it was a pleasure having you on the podcast, first podcast in person. Super pumped to drop this episode, which will... Not be for a couple weeks now, but can't wait to see it when it drops, man. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, guys. Take care. And that is all for this interview. I'm super glad I was able to get Gary on. We talked about a whole bunch of different topics from wholesaling, flipping, finding teams, finding, you you know, your why, getting your time back, freedom. I really hope you guys enjoyed this podcast as much as I had interviewing Gary. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. Again, I am your host, John Mendez. You can find me at John Mendez underscore Realtor and at Walk to Wealth on Instagram. Please make sure to subscribe and leave a review if you're loving the podcast so far. New episodes are released every Sunday. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode. Take care.